Okay, so let me kind of talk to Paul about it. <laughs> We're gonna try. So I'm David. I'm David. <laughs> Sorry. So our project was all around uh, evaluating uh, our statistics carrying microRNA gene expression profiles of uh, different kinds of variables, which are a certain kind of play here. Uh, and so just to give you guys a little bit of background, so uh, microRNAs are small non-coding molecules that basically uh, they are really involved in a lot of gene regulation. Um, and specifically, they've actually been implicated in like the development slash progression of a lot of diseases, but especially in cancer and a lot of different cancer types. Um, and so our project, we are specifically looking at uh, gliomas, which are a very common kind of brain tumor that basically arise, uh, sorry, excuse me, they arise in like glial cells in the brain. Um, and these gliomas are classified on a grade of one through four based on their like severity. And so severity is basically based on the physical characteristics that, such as like size, shape, etc. Um, and grades one and two are called low grade uh, gliomas, which I'll refer to as LGBs from now on. And grades three and four are referred to as high grade gliomas, which are called HGBs. Um, and generally, uh, low grade gliomas have much better prognosis than uh, high grade ones. Uh, so LGBs, uh, uh, average prognosis is somewhere between like five to 10 years, whereas for HGBs, the average uh, um, uh, average life expectancy after their diagnosis is somewhere around 14 months. Um, and the exact relevance of, of a lot of these microRNAs, uh, uh, the exact re relevance of uh, most my microRNA impacts on these gliomas is still unclear. Um, and so we had these two data sets from the International Cancer Genome Consortium. And basically, the first data set uh, had data from 450 um, LGG donors, and we had microRNA expression and gene expression data. Um, the second data set was for high grade gliomas, uh, donors, but there was only around 150 of them, and it only had gene expression data. It didn't have microRNA expression data. So we kept looking online, but we couldn't find an HCG data set that had both uh, micro, uh, gene expression data and microRNA expression data. And so, kind of what our aims were for the project, uh, aim one and two are kind of one big aim, kind of a little bit separated though. So, basically, we wanted to develop a model that uh, could predict a uh, microRNA expression profile based on a gene expression profile. And we want to make sure that this like model basically worked no matter whether a, a, a patient was uh, low grade or high grade. Um, and then basically the idea would be to apply this model to predict like in microRNA expression profiles of like your HDG data set. Um, and then from there, the main goal would basically be to determine um, <clears throat> are, are there certain microRNAs that are uh, ex uh, differentially expressed in one kind of field, in one grade of field versus the other. Um, and there's been previous research done on this, but um, none of it has necessarily taken uh, this approach. And so we were hoping to possibly find potential uh, like novel biomarkers for the two kinds of fields. And then the third aim, which is pretty uh, separate from the first two, was basically we wanted to develop like a classifier where, given like a gene expression uh, profile, you could classify um, a uh, donor as either high grade or low grade. Um, and we want to test this model on uh, both, obviously, both kinds of tumor types. Um, yeah. So, uh, one of the methods that we used for A1 and 2 were uh, just history learning. Uh, basically, it's a supervised learning method for classifying data using a sort of progression. And we decided on that over various other types of regression, such as like linear regression and stuff like that, because Essentially, we had 20,000 genes at our disposal, uh, so like 20,000 independent variables, but only 500 uh, or 450 in our case data points of like each individual donor for the data. And uh, we also used mean squared error as our quality criterion for determining the best genes to use in this model. And uh, we also used this model to then predict the mRNA expression in each data set. And I just want to see here the image of how this is true. Model works. Basically, uh, it starts at a node and then it checks to see whether or not one of the genes or possibly multiple of them combined together in some way uh, is above or below a third of a certain threshold. And if it is, then it can determine the miRNA expression to be within some like value plus or minus small error function. And if it doesn't do that, then it goes on to the next node on the other tree and it keeps doing that. And yeah, so basically we would have uh, one decision tree model for uh, predicting each of the microRNAs um, expression. And then um, for our like, third aim, which was the classifying between uh, uh, high-grade and low-grade gliomas, we decided to use a 
Kernel-wide support vector, vector machine where we use the polynomial uh, function. Um, and kind of the way we sort of um, analyze like this data where we built our model was again, we still have 20,000 possible genes we can look at. Obviously, we don't want to install them in the model. So, first, we kind of determine like within each data set, which were like the 5,000 most variable genes, the variability was just determined as, uh, was determined like to be like the ratio of the same deviation to like the average. So the higher that ratio, the more like the variable distribution of that gene expression. Um, and then we basically looked at for five five thousand genes from each data set, like you know where was the overlap? And so a lot of the overlap was that uh, it was around thirty seven hundred of them. Um, and so from these thirty seven hundred, we then selected uh, like the twenty five genes with the most distant distribution between um, each data set. And when I say like distant, I basically uh, referring to like the relative difference between like the mean of each gene's distribution in the data sets, if that makes sense. Um, and I mentioned earlier that our LGG data set had around 450 donors, and our um, HGG data set only had around 150 donors. And so this kind of created a problem for us because um, we have a lot more LGG data that we could theoretically train with than HGG, but we didn't want to do that because we didn't want our model to just like preferentially select um, uh, LGG as like the given class. And so what we decided to do was we decided to use 100 data points from each data set to train the model, which granted is not that much, and um, we'll talk about the effects of that a little later. But basically, we use 100 data points from each data set to train the model and then use all the remaining ones to test. Um, so looking at decision tree accuracy, um, just for to basically the expected like micro RNA expression that our like, decision tree model predicted was usually somewhere around point here at seven minutes. 0.5 to 2x of the real expression, um, which uh, is a relatively big range, but usually the actual difference is somewhere around like 1.2 or 1.3x um, uh, difference. And basically, the recounts range from like 0 to like 40,000. So they're always like well within like the order of magnitude accuracy. Um, so here we picked, there's 12 different microRNA like examples here. 10 of them were just picked randomly, and then two of them we specifically picked because we wanted to show like kind of. Worst case and also best case like prediction. So near the middle, you see um, microRNA 155. Uh, this, the predicted average is a lot lower than the real average, specifically around three times lower. That's pretty much that's like one of the worst uh, in terms of how like bad our prediction was. And then microRNA 339, the predicted average was almost exactly the same as the real average. Um, and then we basically applied that one, those models to um, the HTG data set. We predicted the microRNA expression of each microRNA, and then we compared um, each ones for each microRNA. We compared their expression between LGGs and HGGs, and so uh, the top graph is like the one the microRNAs with the greatest difference in expression, and the bottom graph the microRNAs with the smallest difference in expression. And uh, we had some good results here in that, for example, in the top graph, a lot of the microRNAs that we saw, such as the one with the large difference, microRNA 34C, uh, 10A, 217, et cetera, those we had seen in, liter in the literature as being like, um, other research had shown that those were differentially expressed between LGG and HEP um, patients. And so that shows that we were correct. Uh, or at least our model, we hope that model was working properly. But microRNAs 216, 96, 224, and 199, even if they were maybe identified as um, important within the own uh, development of cell kind, we didn't find any literature that indicated that uh, they supported one kind or the other. So that shows that they could be good as biomarkers. And then lastly, I want to note that microRNA 598, which had in all of our uh, microRNA like predicted expression, it's supposed to be the smallest difference between LGGs and HGGs. Um, we actually found literature that indicated that it was specifically supposed to be uh, overexpressing HGGs, not LGGs, which we thought was interesting. Um, so that's like something to note. But moving on, and then just to cover the SVM accuracy, um, it was slightly better at classifying the uh, HTG donors than LGG donors, so 83% versus 73%. Uh, previous models that have tried to do something like this uh, had accuracy of around like 85 to 90%. Um, so ours wasn't as accurate, but those models also used more like robust data. So they had like image data, they had like time based data. And so um, theirs would be like more computationally intensive and their data would be more difficult to gather. So ours is kind of like a different approach. Um, but we also think that our accuracy would definitely go up with a larger data set. Um, future directions, uh, we ideally want to gather more data for further training slash foundation models. 
we would want to explore the potential of micro RNAs 216, I6, other ones that were uh, not listed in the literature as potential biomarkers for HD versus LGD, and then uh, possibly building a new model for predicting micro RNA expression with data for both LGDs and HDs, not just LGDs. Um, so you can go to this and then up here. Um, Yes, okay. So, uh, this one I can start with this one there. Yeah, okay. So, in this one, the in this case, the y axis is actually the normalized count as like the so this is basically the y axis here dealing with like the actual expression of the micro RNA, right? So, it's like um, the label for the unit given within like the data set was normalized for count, but here the y axis is actually like normalized expression, right? So um, for example, micro RNA 339, the real average from the data set was like its average expression was almost exactly the same as our predicted expression. But then here, the y-axis is not expression, rather it is a comparison of the expression between uh, low grade gliomas and high grade gliomas. So in the top graph, you can see that micro RNA 34C is expressed uh, about 36 times uh, more heavily in each uh, human Sorry. Um, so yeah, I mean this this looks great. Basically, I'm I'm curious, sort of, you know, why are microRNA special? Why you know, I mean, you could have done that with protein coding two as well. Is our microRNA sort of the you know more actionable, more easy to measure? Right. So for us, part of it was the fact that microRNA is uh, I don't want to say are like new necessarily in research, we've known for a long time, but it seemed as though like the literature was not as like in depth about them as they were about certain other features that we could have tested. Um, they're just seeing like an interesting project. And you have to look at their target because they're not just deep, they're also red tape. Right. So we did we did look at that. Um, so um, I just obviously we already long, so I didn't go like super in depth, but um, our results made sense in that if you look at like you know these targets, for example, 34C217. They have like been proven to have tech genes that uh, whose like up regulation or down regulation would then lead to um, uh, lead to development of either gliomas or uh, cancer in general. Um, and so definitely, I think it would have been useful to have some kind of maybe table here indicating like microRNA gene that it impacts um, and like cancer that it leads. So that that definitely could have uh, added a little bit more. Great, okay. thank you. Thank <laughs> you.